In today's topic, we are going to do something called ordering sides and angles and triangles. In other words, we're going to determine, given information about sides, what do we know about the angles and vice versa. If we're given information about the angles, what do we know about the sides? So before we look at the examples that I have on the notes, I have a demonstration I want to do real quick with you. This is through a, a program called GeoGebra, and you're going to see a couple more demonstrations this week. Um, with using this. And basically, this program just lets us kind of manipulate different geometric diagrams and kind of play around with things and see what happens. So looking at the triangle ABC that I've created, we have three angles. We have 43 degrees, 39.4 degrees, and 97.6. And we can see pretty clearly on this triangle which side is the biggest. Yeah, side AC, the bottom side, is the biggest. Which side do you think is the smallest? Now, well, that one's a little harder to determine. Um, so let's actually look at the measures and see kind of how they compare with what angles they're opposite from. So again, I think side AC is the biggest, and he happens to be opposite the biggest angle. He's directly across from angle B, which is the biggest angle, 97.6 degrees. So let's actually measure that segment. So we're going to use a distance measure and I'm going to click on that segment and voila, we have a measure of 10.8. And so let's measure our other segments. So segment AB is 6.9 and segment BC is 7.4. And so actually our smallest segment BC, excuse me, smallest segment is 6.9. Is he opposite the smallest angle? Ah, angle C is the smallest out of 39.4. So if this rule holds true, if the opposite side or the biggest angle is opposite the biggest side and smallest angle is opposite the smallest side, then I should be able to pull my triangle around and I should still have that property hold true. And so that's where this program is pretty awesome. So let's pull point C around. I need to go back to my select tool or my move tool. And so then I can pull any of these points around and look at what happens. Now, my biggest side is 8.6 and he is opposite what is now the biggest angle, A at 91.4. My smallest side, five, is opposite my 35.2, which is now my smallest angle. So does it work with everything? Well, let's pull B around. Hey, still the smallest side, five straight across from 23.9, my smallest angle. Biggest angle, 109.5, so I've got an obtuse triangle, is directly opposite from that 11.5. So that's why I mentioned finding the opposite angle and opposite side in our last video, because it's really gonna help out today with finding if I know what the biggest angle is, that lets me figure out what the biggest side is. So real quick, let me switch over to our notes. So let's look at some examples now with actually applying this. So technically what we figured out was our theorem, and we showed this with a diagram, and theorem is basically a rule that we've proven. The largest angle of a triangle is always opposite the largest side. We proved it. We looked at a diagram that showed us, yes, that's true. But we also have these things called corollaries, and these are kind of, you know, addendums, add-ons that relate to that same idea. So think about right triangles. So you've talked before about the hypotenuse on a right triangle, that it's always opposite the 90 degree angle. Well, in a right triangle, the 90 degree angle is the biggest angle. So the biggest side, the hypotenuse, must be opposite from it. We could also say the smallest angle of a triangle is always the opposite, opposite the smallest side. If we have two sides that are equal, like an isosceles triangle, then the two angles they're opposite from down the bottom are also going to be equal. And then we can also use that idea if all sides of a triangle are congruent, well, that means that all the angles are congruent. So that's what lets us kind of interchangeably use that wording equilateral or equiangular. And we can actually, that's a really good definition. We can write that as a biconditional and say all sides of a triangle are congruent if and only if all the angles are congruent. So let's use that idea to put some, you know, more qualitative or quantitative, you know, lists together. So our first example, is we're going to list either the sides or the angles in order from least to greatest, but we're going to do the opposite from what we're given. So in example one, we're given the sides. We're actually going to put the angles in order. 
So find your smallest side. So on this one, that means 23.7 centimeters. So he's going to be opposite the smallest angle. And again, if you need to, if you're having difficulty visualizing it, cover up segment RS, and what's the only angle you can still see? Well, angle A. Okay, so the medium-sized side is gonna be opposite the medium-sized angle. And so that's gonna be our 35 centimeters. So directly opposite from that is angle R. And the only le angle left over is angle S, where indeed he is opposite the biggest side, which is 48 degrees. So that's angle S. And so what we have in the middle, again, those are our inequalities. So you'll notice my angle symbols are kind of flat on the bottom versus your inequality is definitely kind of angled up a little bit. Now, usually we're gonna, least, we're gonna list things out from least to greatest, but be careful on your directions because sometimes it's going to flip it around on you that it wants things biggest to smallest or greatest to latest. So just read your directions carefully. Okay, example two. Well, in this one, they gave us the angles. So we're actually gonna put our sides in order on this one. So again, if it helps, okay, smallest angle, angle T or 40 degrees, cover up angle T, what segment can you completely see now? Well, he's gonna be directly opposite from segment SR. And again, you could name this as segment RS. It really doesn't matter the order as long as you have the two endpoints. Our medium angle, well, that's 60 degrees. He's opposite from the ST segment. And then our only one left is the RT, which is opposite from the 90, excuse me, the 80 degree angle, the biggest angle in there. Okay, go ahead, pause the video, try out number three. They gave you your sides. What are you gonna list in order? Alrighty, so because they gave us our sides, we're going to list our angles in order. So here we go. Our smallest side, 3.8, and he is opposite angle C. Now I could name this a couple different ways. I'm using just the single letter because it lets me get into the problem a little quicker, but you may have problems where they're actually giving you a list already created. You've got to figure out your order and you want to be very careful that you're just looking at that middle letter, that vertex. So I could also write this out as angle A, C, B or angle B, C, A. As long as the C is in the middle, it's still naming the same angle. Okay, our medium length, 4.0. So our opposite angle is angle B. I could also name it angle A, B, C. And then our only leftover angle is angle A, which is absolutely opposite our biggest side, 4.3. Again, I can name that a few different ways. For example, angle B, A, C. Okay, another way to talk about these problems is instead of listing them out, describe the relationship between two objects that they gave you. So in our next set, we're given a diagram and I gave you a bunch of triangles that overlap. So probably the easiest thing to do on this one is let's redraw the triangles that use the particular pieces of information. So let's see, we have an example for it. We have angle R and this is when having the three letters comes in handy. If I said angle U, you wouldn't know which angle I'm talking about because we have three different possible angles if we're just looking at the small ones up near U. So if I kind of trace through the letters R, U, S, I'm really looking at this top angle that's kind of made of two of those pieces. So I'm looking at this triangle. So I'm gonna redraw that triangle just so I'm only focusing on that information. So I'm looking at triangle R, U, S, and the only thing they gave me were side measures on this. Okay, my bottom side R, S, if I've got the segments 13 and 25, well, if I put to those together, that's gonna to make 38 degrees. So right off the bat, can you pick out which angle is gonna be the biggest? Uh, angle U is the biggest, and actually that's the one they're asking us about. So angle RUS, no matter which angle I'm comparing it to, that's the biggest angle. So I'm gonna say that angle R is less than angle RUS. And again, it may seem silly, but I still think of this, even if I don't say it out, alligator eats bigger number, the open piece is always gonna face the larger value. So if that helps you remember it, 
use it. Okay, next problem. And I'm gonna go ahead and erase my marks so I don't confuse myself. And this is why using pencil and math is always a good thing. Okay, next one is angle T, relating it to angle UST. So again, if you trace through UST, we're actually just using that top right triangle. But again, I'm gonna go ahead and redraw it so I'm only focusing on that one piece. And my diagram doesn't have to be perfect. It's all about the labels. So I know segment UT is 22, TS is 24, and US is 35. So right off the bat, which angle do you think is the biggest? Angle T happens to be the biggest, and that's what they're asking us to relate. So no matter what, angle T is larger than UST. But again, I could double check it. Angle T is opposite the 35. Angle UST, well, that's angle S. He's directly opposite from the 22. So angle T has to be bigger because he's opposite the bigger side. Alrighty, so let's go the opposite direction. I gave you sides and you had to term, determine relationship between angles. So now let's determine relationship to sides given the angles. And again, some overlapping ha happening with this diagram. So let's just make sure we know what triangle we're using first. So in number six, we're using segment AC and BC. So those are actually part of the big triangle. So let's go ahead and draw that out. So angle B actually have is 90 degrees. That's marked as right angle. Angle A is 30 degrees. What's the measure of angle C if it's using both pieces? Well, that's gonna be 60 degrees, just add them up. Alrighty, so AC is this guy here. He is opposite the 90 degree angle. Wait a second, 90 degrees, the biggest one out of all of them. So which one's the biggest segment? AC. Okay, go ahead and try out number seven and pa or pause the video and try out number seven. All right, so for number seven, again, let me erase my marks. So we need to compare BC and DB. So small triangle on the right hand side. Cool. So again, let me redraw him. We already know our 90 degrees. We already know that small angle up at C is 30 degrees. So what does that mean our leftover angle D needs to be? Well, we've got the same measures in our previous triangle, but just in case, we could always do 180 and subtract out what we know. So we know the 90, we know the 30. If we subtract those out, we're gonna get leftover 60 degrees. And so with these kinds of problems, if you're asked to put these in order and you only know two of the angles, absolutely solve for that third angle. That's why we did that review last class. Alrighty, segment BC is opposite from the 60. Segment DB is opposite from the 30. So which one needs to be bigger? Segment BC is opposite the bigger angle. So that means segment BC is bigger. All right, always, always label your diagram, draw things out. I know a lot of the practice problems we have are done on the screen, but you can always trace them out on your own scratch paper. Again, diagram being perfect doesn't matter. Just be careful that you always copy down your labels accurately. As always, let me know if you have any questions. If not, double check the practice and get started. See you later.